Hey everyone, it's Patricia from Art by Patricia U. Clark. I have this um, a print uh, set on a hard uh, particle board frame and I am going to pour over it today because I love I upcycling um, thrift store canvases and used canvases to turn them into something beautiful. So today we've got a mixture of colors in the blues and reds and throwing in a little purple here and there and maybe a touch of gold so these are my paints i got i don't even know 15 of them out here so let's begin this is a big one it is uh 18 by 24 i believe so here we go lots of paint so i'm going to start doing some reds here because i kind of want it predominantly in the reds gonna take a lot of paint this is a big one gonna probably wipe me out until I can make some more okay so just gonna get I just want some everywhere this is a pretty dominant color for it so I'm gonna put a lot of that on and as you can see when you do acrylic art pouring it takes a lot of paint get a little kind of a maroon some of these colors I've made myself, um, like this one I made from a, a red that I, I just added a, a touch of black to it. This one is kind of a magenta. Didn't make this one. I, yeah, this one comes from a Liquitex, so expensive stuff again. So you can see I'm going to try to cover this entire canvas. And I'm trying to make sure I'm using each color in each spot. So we've got it kind of um, spread out through. All right, we'll go with that one because that one's starting to run out. Okay, got those guys. Going to throw in a little bit of purple here. Not coming out that way, so <laughs> it's too, too narrow, so it's okay though. We are always ready to make adjustments when we do acrylic, acrylic art pouring because sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get anyway. So, so a little more purple here. I love this deep. It's almost like a violet. Um, one more shot over here. Okay. I don't want it to take over, but I do want to see it. Okay. I got this great, great metallic blue really leaves amazing highlights when you when you finish it so I don't again don't want it to take over but it is pretty eh, damn pretty Got those a little close but that's okay all right so a little bit here just a shot okay you can see there's a lot of uh, precision with this all right we're gonna throw in kind of a Let's see if this one's going to come out. It is not. So we're going to throw in an aqua, turquoise-ish, if that's a word, blue. See how these all are kind of in the similar family? They're um, really nice colors together, too, and they're striking. I, I've done a couple of paintings with this. There, there goes that one, too. Okay, we're done with that color. And each of these paints, by the way, this is a 12 ounce, uh, all like a ketchup bottle that you'd have at a picnic. Each one of these um, contains a medium that I make up of Flotra. This one's gonna come out, I believe. A Flotra and Liquitex uh, high gloss varnish. And that's a little close to that one, so let's not put the same colors together if possible. I just like, I like the metallic in there but this one is not but i don't want to get too much of this because they are very similar it's just not metallic okay and i have some ultramarine anyway um so yeah, i think we got the same on that one that's okay um so i i use that and then i um use a thing called gap 800 and that helps create cells so I use those three and then I mix them with um, one part paint to three parts of that medium combined. So I'm throwing in just 
just a touch of some neon pink because what's really nice about stuff like this is you want it to pop but you don't want it to take over i may be emptying this one as well like i said i will probably use a solid fifty dollars worth of paint on this painting alone which is why artists charge a little bit more this this is a neon blue i'm debating on that one I, again no too much blue and i got this uh neon purple so i i do like these bright poppy colors and that one's close to these but it's different and that's what we want um we want them to be in the same family um but we want to see the the similarities we want to see the differences i'm trying to decide still if we have enough paint as you can see i haven't quite got all the holes covered i do have it taped off actually brad taped this off for me earlier today so it is black underneath and probably when it's all said and done i will just paint that over black again because it's kind of the old printed black uh, what the hell let's just empty that one too okay do, 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 do. and did i get all my colors no i want to throw a little bit of this kind of dark red it's in between that one and that one this is kind of a fire engine this is a little bit darker but it's not maroon so we want to fill in these holes because honestly we want the entire canvas pretty much to be covered if that is possible now i have black and i can use it but i don't want black to take over either and it will do that black will help with cellular production but it also can take over all right what else all right i'm gonna i'm gonna be brave here i'm gonna use just a little bit of metallic metallic gold and, and again this is gold is one of those that will take over so we want to use it sparingly it's really nice and it can do a lot for your painting but I don't want a gold painting. I want it to be in reds primarily and then blues. Okay, now what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna do some swiping. Now I'm gonna use this um, spatula that I have not properly cleaned off, so ours never do this. Just clean your spatulas when and before it dries on. Otherwise I'd be scrubbing it off, but it doesn't matter, it's dry now. So I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to swipe each of these colors together. And I want to make sure, and at the end I'll do this more, but I want to make sure I'm getting the, the all of it. Now you see we have a lot more paint kind of towards the middle where it kind of puddled up. This is actually called a puddle pour. So, because I poured all those puddles in the middle and all over the painting. So I do want to hit every one of those puddles. Now, it is important that we don't muddy this. Now, these are all colors that will work together, but because I threw a little of that gold in there, um, gold is kind of in the yellow family, and yellow and purple will make brown. So, I want to be careful about that because we don't want a brown paint. And we paint with bright, vibrant colors, and that's what we're going for. So... As you can see, we got some variety going on here. And um, Brad, if you can give me a little bit of a close up in this area, you can see already I've got some cells forming. Um, what'll happen is that these paints are different viscosities, different thicknesses. And so the lighter ones will rise to the top and pop through. And sometimes if you're lucky, you get layered um, cells. So, right now, I'm not content with this yet. So, I'm going to do a little bit of pour off, which with a painting this heavy is a little bit of a pain. I also want to make sure I've got the color. Oh, I missed that. I've got to make sure I've got the colors kind of evenly distributed because we're still looking at our composition here. And while this looks like, hey, look at that gold popped out. While this may look like um, chaos, can be really nice 
Um, I'm, there we go again. So really want to check your edges. Important that everything's covered. Now, normally if I pour off, I would have it pour off on the sides too, but because it's heavy, I decided just to leave it with the black on the edges instead of a paint. Okay, paper towels, wipe my spatula off. Now, wait a minute, I don't like this hair at all. So, again, you're seeing all these cells pop up. So, you're about to see a whole lot more cells pop out. So I'm going to torch this with a butane torch. And this will, the heat will activate these cells to come to life. And you can see already, getting a lot of this going on. You can see up close here, the more I torch it, the more cells are created. Some of them are going to be big, but they're going to be multi-layered. Some of them are going to be really tiny, you may not be able to see those. That's okay. But you'll see it when the painting is finished. Now here, I got this glob. I don't like this, so I'm going to kind of move this around and blend it in. Um, this here is kind of a solid. I don't really like that. I'm going to see if we can get some of that blues over here. And then I can always retorch paper towel over that. And I want to do it, I want to do the torching as early as possible uh, while the paint will still rise above. Because once it's kind of starting to set, it's not going to do that. Okay, uh, this corner. Definitely need some help over here. So you got to just kind of watch it and see where, see where things are going. If you don't like it, you can fix it. This is the time to do it. Like I said, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get. I've got a box of chocolates over here. So I'm going to wipe that off. One more time with the torch. And then the places that I did earlier, that I moved stuff around. So the gold is not, you, you almost can't see the gold. And that's okay, I'm all right with that. But the pinks are popping. The little purples are popping. We've got plenty of blues. I think it's pretty evenly distributed. All right, so now uh, this is the fun part for me because I'm going to do just a little bit of tilting. And um, we have the sides covered, so I don't have to worry about that. But with the tilting, I'm going to try to tilt this off. I have a surface underneath. I'm not married to it going that way, and it may not even be the way I want it. We might just leave it as is, to be honest with you. I'm not sure I like the idea of this tilt at all, but I kind of want to get that gob of red down there. So it's got some movement to it. I know we did a lot of movement. You can see all that excess paint dripping. And I really don't have a lot of excess paint. I have pretty much even amount of paint. The more paint you have, um, now, probably the more you want to try to pour off, but you also want to consider your composition. So find the weak parts of a painting that you don't want to stay. If there's a big glob of one color, you might want to pour that off. And notice I didn't use black. Okay, I kind of want to... Do a little bit more pour off over here, but not just to get those edges evened out. Yeah, how's that? See how it's moving? And we don't want to lose our cells too, because sometimes if you pour too much, they disappear. And of course I have paint everywhere. My whole world is covered with paint. I'm gonna torch it just one more time because I just because we did lose some of those cells when I tilted them. You know, maybe in retrospect I should have just left it alone. You can sometimes there's just a little bit that may not be covered. Just want to touch it up with your fingers and make sure it's covered now because the more it dries, the harder it's going to be to fix that. You don't want to have to come in with a brush later and touch up. 
because you want it to show that it's all one um, big flow and then works together without interruption. So, all right. And that's basically how you do a, a, a puddle pour. Now there's a ton of other techniques if you've never seen this um, fluid art pouring technique before, but as you can see, this is a very vibrant painting. Um, in fact, I'm going to get some close-ups in here while it's still wet and has a nice uh, um, sheen to it. I don't like that. Let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of swirlies. And that's okay too. You can use your fingers, you can use your tool, whatever you want. So I'm going to take over the camera here, Brad. Thank you. And I'm going to get some nice close-ups in here because I'm right here. And Brad's done an excellent job of, of showing you what we got here. And I know that looks orange. It is not orange. It is red. The Honestly, the camera does not do this justice at all. Um, this would look amazing in somebody's living room. I just got paint on my phone, but my paint, my phone is covered with paint. So I think we, uh, I think we have a winner here. I'll try to get the gist of the painting in here. And um, that's it. So that's your lesson for today. Thanks for stopping by. Um, follow me on Instagram at art by Patricia U. Clark. Um, you can go to my Etsy page, artbypatriciauclark.com, and my art gallery is also artbypatriciauclark.org. Thanks for watching. See you next time.